Hey, how are you? Well, this is my painting class number four, and today we're painting a scene from Vermont. This is up in Bethel, Vermont, and it's a nice pastoral view, and I took this picture with my phone probably in July, and I was looking for things to paint, and so that's what I came up with. Now, to get started, you need to go to my website, search painting class number four. You can print out this piece of paper with the subject that you're going to paint, and a drawing of it in reverse. Trace the drawing with charcoal pencil, press that drawing onto the surface that you're going to paint on, and you're ready to get started. Now, if you need more information, click on the link right here, and that'll take you to the first class where I cover it in a little bit more detail. So let's go ahead and get started. Right away, I'm going to wash the sky in, and I've mixed up a little white with some cerulean blue and added a little bit of yellow and some burnt umber. And so I'll just wash that sky in. The reason why I like to wash the sky in is as I start to paint the trees, it's, it's easier to push the green up into the sky than it is to pull the sky down into the green. You often end up getting a little green on your brush and then your sky turns green. And I'll take a little white and just push that around and maybe just a little, a little bit more of the cerulean blue here and I'll just grab just a tad with that with the tip of my brush to what I want to do is take away a little bit of that gray and I'll just work it all over the top of the sky here this is a little color I had on my palette from yesterday and it's it's white and permanent green some yellow and maybe a little burnt umber and we'll start to wash in this foreground here. And now I think I'm going to mix up a little bit of a tan color. So I'll use white, maybe a little yellow, and a little of the burnt umber. So I can, oh geez, I picked up some red there, but that might be okay. Let's see what happens. Hmm. There are some red notes in there, but uh, not the color I have on there now. Let me throw some of that in the background here. That's very red. See, there's a little red on the palette and such a strong color, that cadmium red, it just seems to dominate. Now I'm going to start working on this area over here and some of these darker greens. So I'll grab a little of the permanent green. Got a little permanent green and a little of this burnt umber. Sort of a, I want to knock that color down. I don't want that fresh color that comes right out of the tube. It's just way too bright. So that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll add a little gray just to flatten it a bit. Not a little gray, but a little white. Okay, let's see how that works. I'm working on these these trees here and then I'll work on this foreground these trees here in the foreground and now I'm going to go back into that pasture color with I've got this sort of pink a warm yellowy pink color here and I'm gonna go right on top of that with some green and then maybe I'll try to get some of the paint off of my brush with a paper towel and pull that color some more and you, you have to think about light if you look down at the photograph you can see that the sun is coming from the south and you've got this big dark patch here and that's just the absence of light and it's the same thing over here Oops. And it's the same thing over here and then in this this area here there's areas where the light is coming through the trees 
and if we can paint that in that'll give us some depth also the darkness in the grass right here so let's throw let's add a little black to that darker green and see what happens if we just throw some darks in there it comes right across it's all shadow is what it is and then some of the tree trunks and then there's light color right where the right where the light is really hitting this bush I don't know if you can see it in the photograph but it's a windy day and this bush is bent over a little bit and there's a lot of light sort of right here I've got a lot of paint on the canvas and I'm going to use a dry brush and just bring these lines together Everything that I do is, is an experiment. I, I often don't you know, really know what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm just finding my way. And so we'll see if this works. And to be honest with you, I, I would like to leave the painting just the way it is. There's something about it. It's, it's kind of a combination of a painting and a drawing. But I'll take it the full distance and we'll see what happens. And this color in here, maybe I'll mix up a little bit more of a of a gray of a sort of a warmer gray color here a little bit lighter than this and I'll grab some yellow here and some white make sure I stay away from that red and a little of this burnt umber here and we'll put this color up in that pasture we're dealing with this area right here. And we'll just put it right in there just as a note, a note of color. And back in here too. And then some of these colors, let's just see what happens if I bring some of these colors down in here. And now I'm going to grab a little bit more of this lighter green and try to pull this, this foreground green into the painting. Close that gap. I want to have more of a pasture color in here right now. So I'll get a clean brush and pick up some more of this pasture color maybe a little bit of a lighter green and now if I really get the darks happening the shadows happening underneath here uh, that should help out so I'm going to I've got this green on my palette right here and I'll get a clean brush and I'll add a little black and a little of that burnt umber to it. See what that does. And there's an absence of light in this big pine tree up here. So the dark colors and that might pop that hopefully will pop this bush that's in the foreground. There's a little bit over here and some more happening right in here. And if we look at the, the photograph over here, there's a shadow on these smaller pines being cast from this big pine. And now I'll push that pine up. I really didn't draw this tree here. Oops, I wasn't doing that. See? I wasn't showing you. Um, I added a little darker color here. But see, now I want to take this pine and push it up into the sky a little bit more. And see how this goes. And 
And then if we come down to the photograph again, we've got this tree and that's over here and we'll just put a little lighter green in there see how that goes maybe I'll define those trunks a little bit after after I put this in there's, and there's maybe some white in there too are a very light color where the sun is just catching those leaves. And the same thing with this, you see this this tree has a lot of light in it. Let's see if we can do something about that bush here. And now, now I'm going to draw these trunks in a little bit. See how that goes. With a little bit of a little bit of the burnt umber again, and some of the green, and we'll just see what happens. Ooh, it's like a little dark, isn't it? Hmm. Right in here. That's a little bit better. And I'll add a little color in there. I'll add a little more green in here. Break that trunk up that I had made. And pull some of this color over again. Hmm. I don't like what's happening here, so I've got to add a little yellow to the green. And I want to pull the pasture in again. So I'll grab some of that tanner color. See... <laughs> The funny thing is I should have just left the painting before because I'm, as, as I continue, I'm becoming less and less happy with it. I liked it when it was more of a drawing. But this is a problem area right here, so I'm going to, you can see it's, it's better down here. And I really don't care that much about the photograph. I just want a good painting. So if I can get something that uh, pleases me as a painting, well, I'm fine. I don't, it, I'm not trying to make a photograph. So... I have to deal with this color here. I need some of this light green, a little yellow, and maybe a little bit of a tan color. Uh, this might work. We'll see. This has got a lot more yellow in it. You can see that? And I like some of that color maybe in the foreground here. I've put a little black in here and now I've got a bit of a problem here. So I, I, this is sort of my problem area. I need to work on that a bit. And I'll get a little of the lighter green it doesn't it's not reading as a, a tree or a bush it's sort of reading as something happening here with with the uh, it's kind of reading like it's part of the pasture, so that's an, that's an issue. So now I'm going to go back to the darker green again and try to work that back of the tree where there's no sun hitting it. And 
and then maybe if I work the pasture a little bit more I'm mixing up a little more of that tan color with the yellow and some white and some burnt umber and I'll try to throw it in here and maybe I can shape that tree again <laughs> goodness gracious I tell you well, I'll knock that color down a bit but and I do want to add a little red in to this area here so maybe I'll grab a little bit of that red that's on my palette mix it in there a little bit right here the next step is to I want to work on the shadow I like the way that white looks there it's but I feel like I got to go the extra distance and just because uh, I'm going, I'm trying to make a realistic painting, but I just like the way that looks. It's almost like a watercolor painting or something. So I'll take some of that darker green and fill in a little bit. Those are those trees casting a shadow. And look at, if we look down here, this might help me a bit. This shadow comes right across the pasture and hits this bush. So maybe that'll do something good for me. I'm pulling up some of that pasture color because it's it's on there pretty thick. I think I think what I want to do now is find a color somewhere a little bit lighter than this and if I can just put a little bit of color there that might define that bush I think I might put that on with the knife see how that works I need to blend that a little bit with this dry brush here. And I'll use some of the lighter green to make a line. This is a line of sun. I want to add some lighter color in here and hopefully that'll give me a little distance so I'll go back to the palette and again go back to this this white and a little bit of tan maybe a little bit more white and let's see if we can just drop that color in there a little bit and maybe a little bit right over here too And I'll fill these areas in. Oof, that's not what I wanted. I want something lighter here. And also, this pine tree here in the photograph, you can see the trunk of it. It's catching a lot of light right there. So maybe we can just drop a little light on that, see if that helps. Sometimes it's tricky to get the paint to come off the brush when your whole painting is wet, but we'll just see if that works. All right, let's see about throwing a little light right here. Okay. All right, that's good enough. I'm going to leave it. Well, I made this painting yesterday, 
And I bought it inside to where I have, uh, I call it a test table, where I've got this little table and a, an easel and a frame, and I just drop the paintings in. And if I can sort of live with the painting for a few hours and still like it, then that's good enough for me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for tuning in. Keep painting, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.